this voltage based protection may trigger your uh, MOSFET earlier compared to the current based. The reason is the current will only change when your feedback responds. Okay. So, when you start drawing uh, the load current, what will happen? So, if this is your load, So, when you start drawing more current, what will happen? This will, the PMOS can only supply the more current when the gate voltage changes and gate voltage will change through this feedback and we know it has a limited bandwidth, but output can, I mean by the time your uh, loop responds, it is quite possible your output may start going low. Okay. So, if you all of a sudden you make your, let us say, uh, current from 1 milliamp to 10 milliamp or 20 milliamp whatever. If you connect to the ground, literally connect to the ground then you know output is in any case going low. So, this uh, comparator will trigger immediately okay, irrespective of uh, whether your current changes or not. But let us say you are slowly increasing the load current and you are going beyond the limits. Uh, so, let us say uh, you have designed your regulator for 1 milliamp and uh, it is started increasing 1, 2, 3, 4 and going let us say 10 milliamp. So, when it reaches up to 10 milliamp, we know so 1, or 1 to 10 milliamp, uh, let us say you give a sudden change, then your loop will take some time to respond and your output will keep dropping until that time and it is quite possible that it may go below your threshold and this will trigger and turn off your MOSFET. Okay. When you turned off the MOSFET then how do you come back actually, now your circuit is dead. So, let us say you have uh, applied a short circuit and most of the time it happens while testing or uh, doing anything in the lab. So, let us say in cell phone you have a regulator, this output supplies, this regulator is supplying to some module here, some other chip and uh, you are testing your, your phone and accidentally you shorted it. Usually, the short circuit protection are for accidental short circuit because nobody will literally try to connect to the ground output. Huh? It does not make any sense. So, usually for accidental short circuits you try to or let us say your uh, cell phone uh, uh, you have dropped it in water or somewhere that may also create your short circuit between the supplies and your ground. So, once it is shorted you have turned off P PMOS and now you want to boot your phone again or let us say your phone is not restarted, but phone is still on, but this supply is off that is also possible. Huh? Either you restart your phone, but if you are not restarting your phone can usually you want to uh, uh, you want your phone to come out of this situation on its own automatically. So, how can we do that? you have turned it off. So, your supply is dead. Now, you want to again activate the supply. So, what do you do actually? You reset this. So, basically you make this VSC again high and activate this regulator again and then again the same process will start. If short circuit has been removed, so let us say it is what an accidental short circuit. I mean, let us say you are doing something, let us say you had a screwdriver and the screwdriver got, uh, basically caused a short circuit between output and ground, but when you remove the screwdriver, the short circuit went away. So, then what will happen? Uh, you turn on again this regulator by turning off this uh, or pulling this gate to. So, you do it periodically, there is some uh, state machine required for that. So, what you do? You take the output, pass it through some state machine which will periodically keep doing what will happen. When it, whenever it goes low, it will immediately pull it to low and after some time, you count let us say few cycles. So, let us say every 1 second or so or half a second, uh, usually if it is a man-made uh, short circuit, then you know we cannot uh, respond in 1 or 2 milliseconds. Huh? It may take at least 100 milliseconds or so. So, let us say every 100 millisecond, you again reset this output, make it high 
and your regulator will start automatically. So, if there there is a short circuit, your output will not go to will not increase, it will stuck to 0, then again short circuit will trigger okay, and it will again turn off. So, it will keep doing that until that is removed. So, let us say short circuit is removed, then when the regulator is started, it will settle to its desired output. So, automatically it will come out of that short circuit. So, this is periodically done in the state machine and that is called something uh, the name for that is hiccup mode actually, because you periodically keep doing you remove that uh, uh, basically this fit, uh, because this is turning off this by pulling it high. So, what you do you turn off this periodically and check whether short circuit has been removed or not, if it has been removed. Okay. Otherwise, if you do not do this then you will have to hard start or hard reboot your cell phone or any other device, whether it is a laptop or Okay. So, we we'll see goes low So, let us say I call it M P C. is periodically set to 1 on logic high to check. clear. So, and there is something called fold back current limit. So, what happens? This is your MOSFET. This is your load current. VDD and this is your V out. So, what is the power dissipation in this device? Power dissipated VDD minus V out into I load. Okay. So, let us say you have short circuited V out is 0 and you have set the current limit whatever the maximum. So, let us say 1 milliamp was the normal drive you set at 2 milliamp. Okay. You are not turning off the device. So, there are two ways I told you one in you can turn off other is you can just limit that current. Okay. So, limiting the current means you somehow pull pull this gate. So, when you are increasing the current, this amplifier will try to pull it to low. So, you provide an alternate path which will try to pull it high. So, it will not allow to pull it to low to certain limit. So, let us say you keep the same MOSFET and just make it strong enough to make sure when this is fully on. 
so this voltage is set to some mid level if you make it too strong then what i mean this this has some current capability yeah it can sink so let's say it it can sink maximum 10 microamp of the current and if this device can also supply 10 microamp of the current so your voltage will be somewhere in the mid okay but if you make it to have a 100 microamp current then this will completely pull it to vdd but so and if this strength of this device is less than 10 microamp then this can pull it to towards the ground okay so let's say this is 10 times weaker than your 10 microamp so that's how you make it uh, strong enough that it should not completely turn it off but make this weaker so you can limit the current so that's another way of doing current limit so in that case you don't turn off the device but just make your mosfet get high enough so that it cannot supply more than that current so so let's say i have said that and maximum it can supply 2 milliamp current after 2 milliamp i activate this and it will try to basically reduce the vgs of this so that it cannot uh derive uh, basically it cannot supply higher current so but let's say you have a short circuit so with a short circuit what you are trying you are trying to limit the mosfet current to 2 milliamp or so but what happened to the vds vds is increased here ha huh? so what will happen to the power dissipation so let's say in the normal condition your vds was 100 milliamp 1 milliamp so what is your power dissipation in that case 100 milliamp and 1 milliamp is the current so 100 milliamp multiplied by 1 milliamp sorry 100 millivolt multiplied by so 0.1 milliwatt and that's how you will size it ha huh? so you'll size this transistor to basically deliver that much power but now all of a sudden you have grounded it and the power dissipation has increased to 10 times correct or even more than 10 times if this vdd is 1.8 volt so 1.8 volt and this is ground your current is now 2x so 1.8 multiplied by 2 so uh, almost like 3.6 milliwatt or so correct i mean it's a milliwatt don't think that milliwatt is too low because these devices are sized to carry for i mean the way you have sized the devices the milliwatt is much higher watt for them okay so it depends on how you have sized it so you don't want this mosfet to dissipate more power so one reason is obviously that Uh, any dissipated power will convert to heat and that heat high temperature may melt your traces or it may damage the device so that's a one reason other reason is let's say even if the device is not damaged you are drawing lot of power from the battery yeah unnecessary so your battery will drain in that case quicker so you don't want that situation to happen so what do you do if i want to maintain this uh, power dissipation then what i can do i don't have any control on the drop out because this is shorted to ground so only control i have to the current so instead of limiting the current at 2 milliamp now i'll start reducing the current actually so that i can maintain the power dissipated and that's what we called fold back actually So if this is your I load, okay, and that's what happens. So if this is your I max, what do you do? You just back off the current. okay when you back off the current what will happen your uh, drop out remains fixed and your current is reduced so the product of current and voltage will not increase that much so how do we do that so you sense the load current and as load current is increasing what do you do you increase the gate voltage okay 
So, the same method is used actually all you need to do just uh, instead of comparator you use some continuous way of. So, one way is uh, you can just uh, drop that sense current to a voltage uh, to, to a resistor and convert that current into a voltage and then do a control this ok. Any questions? Ok, but most of the time we use this uh, instead of limiting the current you just turn off the regulator ok, uh, if short circuit happens because in the short circuit uh, you really output is gone out of regulation and any system which is uh, requires a uh, VDD of range plus minus 10 percent that will you know that will automatically shut down. So, there is no point of turn keeping that regulator on you just turn off that and but there might be some requirement where you may want to keep the regulator on due to some reason let us say your regulator is taking lot of time to turn on when you turn it off and in order to avoid that current uh, that time basically they just uh, whenever the again basically system is turned on they can uh, have a supply available instead of waiting for a longer time. But in switching regulators we used uh, both actually we used current limit as well as uh, the short circuit protection. So, there might be lot of topologies available. Uh, so, the intention is to give you the basic idea of LDO if you want to know about new topologies what are different you can just go and read the papers latest papers you can read some of our papers also uh, on LDOs and see what we have done we have tried some different compensation technique we have tried build the LDO using uh, voltage control oscillators that is time based recently. So, those are all, all new techniques uh, which we tried. So, there are some ultra low current LDOs which are designed using some nano amps of the current uh, for energy harvesting purpose. So, a lot of research is, is going on there this is not a only thing, but uh, once you know the basics you can think more about what you can do to improve this or how you can build a something which will have a lesser area and a lesser power ok.